Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video is about walking on eggshells around narcissistic people. Walking on eggshells is the term most commonly used when the narcissist conditions you to tiptoe around them for fear of their reactions, fear of their anger, fear of an argument, fear of them abandoning you, fear of them falling silent on you. Because we fear how they might behave towards us is often why people end up walking on eggshells around them. We begin to hide our authentic self and we hide our true feelings, our true opinions to please somebody else. It is a subtle form of emotional abuse by coercive control. It's slowly training you on how to behave for them. Walking on eggshells is what people end up doing around negative, toxic or abusive people, most often subconsciously. We end up doing this over time in order to protect ourselves from further abuse. Usually when we can still not quite work out that we're in an abusive relationship, we can't work out the games they are playing, we can't work out what's happening to us through all their gaslighting and we slowly begin to lose our values, beliefs and boundaries. Most of the time, many people don't realise they are being abused. Most abusers will create an environment of insecurity, instability, confusion, stress and fear. So they gain full power and control over us, all while telling us that they love us just to confuse us even more. We then end up walking on eggshells to please them. Some examples are one, afraid of speaking up for who you are or voicing your opinion, doing the things that you like to do because you're afraid to cause an argument, fear of reactions, fear of abandonment through the narcissist's silent treatments, then they blame it all on you. They tell us things like, you're too sensitive, you always get your feelings, your opinions invalidated by a narcissist, which causes that self-doubt, it causes that rumination, it causes that anxiety, as you are never validated by them. They just continue to crush your self-esteem. Two, fear of receiving anger from them, either when they rage out at you or those passive aggressive reactions such as their silent treatments and sulks. Three, you begin to fear making a noise that might disturb them and never know what their reactions might be if you do disturb them. Four, fear of dressing how you want for fear of what they might say or do. Overt narcissists claim that you look too thin, you look too fat or covert narcissists are you really going to wear that? The covert doesn't directly point it out like the overt and both ways still plant those seeds of self-doubt within our own mindsets. Five, fear of not responding to a message or phone call instantly to them as we know we will have consequences from them and questions after questions of why we didn't where we were it's a case of they say jump and we end up learning how to say how high six afraid to live your life and be exactly who you want to be because you get criticized judged devalued evaluated at every single turn or you get those arguments. Doing simple chores like going shopping can explode into a huge argument with a narcissist if the narcissist isn't happy. A special occasion can be ruined if a narcissist isn't happy. They're going to do all they can to bring you down, to sabotage you and to stop you doing all the things that you enjoy to do. They might cause arguments before you go. They might cause arguments with when you return, we always fear what reaction we're going to get from them. Seven, fear of asking others for help in case they don't understand us or they don't believe us. Eight, 
fear of not making their meals right because we've brought the wrong kind of bread or we've brought the wrong sliced bread. It's too thick, it's too thin, it's too crumbly. There's always something wrong. When a narcissist wants to chip away at you, they will find anything they can to chip away at you about. Nine, fear of going out or talking to friends and family, slowly ending up becoming isolated, cut off from those who do love and care for you. They cause arguments before we go out or when we come home, or they silent treatment us, or they say things like, they don't even like you, why would you go out with them? They only talk about you behind your back, a form of triangulation, divide and conquer. So we end up questioning ourselves and not the very person we should be questioning. We end up questioning our friends and family who are supportive of us and not the very person who is sabotaging us. 10. Fear of being judged by others if we do speak out. Fear of being judged by others if we leave the relationship. Fear of not being able to get the help and support that we need. Once out, we may still suffer from these. They've been programmed into us to think this way over a period of time. So we can fear reactions from others who wouldn't even react to us in the same way. We have to focus on our freedom, even if it's things like turning our music up loud whenever we please, hoovering whenever we like, not answering the phone, leaving it be. The effects of walking on eggshells are anxiety. So you might not fear the phone ringing or a message coming through. That sound of a message coming through can make you jump, can cause that anxiety. Even though it's in your past and not in your present, as your mind has been subconsciously programmed to respond that way to the phone or turning up the music, fear of speaking up for yourself to others who are not abusive, just in case they react negatively to you. Saying no to others, you can often become a people pleaser and fear saying no to others because we've been trained to fear their reactions, especially when raised by narcissistic parents. Two, loss of self-esteem from all the criticism and put downs the narcissist has drip fed us over a prolonged period of time. Three, feeling completely shut off from the outside world and others, no longer feeling able to express ourselves or our feelings. Four, constantly apologising to others for things that we haven't even done, things we don't even need to apologise for. Apologising for breathing, walking through a door. Five, leaving your own inner critic, your own voice, talking to yourself how your abuser spoke to you and constantly putting yourself down does your inner critic ask if you're going to wear that do i really need to do that do i really need to see those people do those people even like me six loss of personal self and freedom due to anxiety no longer wanting to do the things for you as you've been programmed to ask the narcissist for permission first or you fear failure because they've told you time and time again that you're not good enough. They've conditioned you into believing you're not enough and that you're not capable when you are enough and you are capable. Sometimes in life, we just have to get started so that we can learn, so that we can find our motivation and so that we can see ourselves improve. We might avoid all situations full stop as we already know how people will react. So we begin to fear how people will react. Seven, fear of speaking up for yourself, being who you want to be. Fear of offending people, fear of being judged by people, fear of being criticised by people. What can you do about it? One, if you're still in the relationship, start working on a safe plan to safely get out to start working on yourself some narcissists are dangerous so i wouldn't recommend doing it in front of them if you're working on a plan to get out if you are out start to express yourself again in your own personal likes and dislikes learn your values your beliefs create your boundaries your needs 
and your wants. Start doing all the things that you love to do that the narcissist wouldn't let you do. Sometimes your motivation comes once you start doing. So at some point you have to just force yourself to get up and do the things that you want to do. Give yourself a reason why you want to do something. Tell yourself how you're going to feel once you've had it. The confidence often comes during the process of learning a new skill. If someone's never played a guitar in their entire life, they're going to pick it up and most likely they're going to suck at it. And if they give up, they're never going to learn. However, if they really want to learn and they keep going and going and going, the more they pick it up, the more the confidence is going to grow and the more their ability will grow with it. So start doing all the things that you want to do. Three, surrounding yourself with positive, happy people who are happy to show emotions as this will set you free to feel like you can show yours. We all have emotions. We all have insecurities. We all have vulnerabilities. We have to learn to accept our own. Four, create those new boundaries around your values and beliefs. If something doesn't feel right, it's not right. Say no, stick to your no, and you must enforce these no's. Five, create those new core values and standards of the things that matter to you. Yes, I have repeated this a few times. Your core values, your beliefs are your everything. They they are what often drive you to do the things that you do and stop you from doing the things that you don't want to do. If you think that somebody is going to respond in a negative way to you, it stops you doing the things that you want to to do. They are your beliefs that need changing. Six, choose to surround yourself with those who want to see you do well, as you want to see those do well. Walk away from those who drag you down. Walk away from those who drag others down, who gossip about others. You don't have to cut everybody out of your life. However, if someone holds a lot of grudges, if someone is constantly pulling everybody else down around them, you want to distance yourself from them. You want to observe their behaviour, recognise them for who they are and don't let them impact who you are as a person. Seven, keep asking yourself, what are the things that I enjoy doing? And start doing those things. Eight, reconnect with old friends, old family, those who will understand. Ask yourself if this was one of your old friends and they came up to you with the things that you've been through, would you want to help them? Most people would definitely want to help. Those who tried to warn you, yes, sometimes we have to swallow our pride and our ego. Those who tried to warn you, try to help you because they care about you. Go and approach those people. Most of them, like yourself, would want to be there for you. Nine, take those baby steps. It's the only way. And keep going each and every day. You're allowed to step back now and again. Just dust yourself off and go again. I shall add in the video description the video on gaslighting, as this is often why our mind becomes reprogrammed. The video on narcissistic rage and passive aggressive behaviors to understand more about recognizing that kind of behavior in another person and the video on limiting beliefs. Thank you very much for listening. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.